section 2.3 for relation coefficient. Let's start with the definition. The correlation coefficient or rho xy between n two random variables x and y is defined as the division of covariance of x and y by the standard deviations of x and y. Since the standard deviation of variance can be denoted as sigma x and the standard deviation of y can be denoted as sigma y and the covariance of x and y as sigma xy, we can write the correlation coefficient or rho xy as sigma xy divided by sigma x times sigma y. These are the properties of correlation coefficient. It is a measure of linear association between two variables. Unlike the covariance, correlation coefficient is independent of the units of measurements of x and y. It is bounded between negative 1 and positive 1, which means the values of rho xy will always be a value in between negative 1 or positive 1, including both. If we look at the sign of the correlation coefficient, it will be as same as the sign of the covariance. If the correlation is zero, that means x and y are uncorrelated. By drawing scatter plots between x and y, we can identify different correlations. If x and y has a scatter plot as in the first figure, that means x and y have a positive correlation, which means when x is increasing, y is also increasing. If the scatter plot between x and y is like the second figure, we say x and y are negatively correlated, which means when x is increasing, y is decreasing. If there is no correlation at all between x and y, the scatter plot will be like the third figure, which shows no pattern at all. Theorem 2.2 The correlation between x and y is always in between negative 1 and positive 1. Let's see how we can calculate the correlation coefficient. Let's recall the example 2.2. If you can remember, we found the following answers. The variance of x is 3 over 80, variance of y is 1 over 20, and the covariance between x and y is 1 over 40. Then, we can find the correlation between x and y by applying the definition since the covariance between x and y is 1 over 40, we put that in the numerator. Then the variance of x, which is 3 over 80, taking the square root of that, we get the standard deviation of x. Then the variance of y is 1 over 20, taking the square root of that is the standard deviation of y. So 1 over 40 divided by the square root of 3 over 80 times the square root of 1 over 20, we get the answer as 0 0.57. Now how do we interpret that result? Since the correlation coefficient can have values in between negative 1 up to positive 1, by looking at the value we get for correlation coefficient, we can interpret the result. If the correlation coefficient is a negative value, that means x and y are negatively correlated. If the correlation coefficient is a positive value, 
then x and y are positively correlated. Now by looking at the value, if the value is exactly negative 1, we say it is a perfect negative correlation. If the value is exactly plus 1, we say it is a perfectly positive correlation. If the value of correlation is 0, we say there is no correlation at all between x and y. If the value of correlation is very close to negative 1, say for example negative 0.9, negative 0.85, we say it is a strong negative correlation. Similarly, if the value is close to plus 1, like plus 0.9, plus 0.82, we say that is a strong positive correlation. Similarly, if the values are close to zero, either from negative or positive side, they will be weak correlations. Also, if the values are close to negative 0.5 or positive 0.5, depending on the sign, we say they are moderately correlated. Therefore, our answer 0.57 indicates a moderate positive linear relationship. Remember that correlation coefficient measures only the linear association. Here is an application of the correlation coefficient, the cauchy joas inequality. Let x and y be two random variables such that the expected value of x square and expected value of y square exist. Then we end up with this inequality, that is, the expected value of xy whole thing squared is always less than or equal to the product of expected value of x square and expected value of y square. Let's look at the proof. For any real number k, the expected value of kx plus y square is always positive because it is a square term, you cannot have a negative value. So this expression is always greater than or equal to zero. Now let's expand this quadratic term and distribute the expected value. Now in this case, our variable of interest is k. So if we expand this expression, we end up with k square expected value of x square plus expected value of y square plus 2 times k times expected value of xy. And the right hand side is greater than or equal to 0. Now for this quadratic expression, which is always positive, the curve will always be above the x-axis, which means it will have only one real root or no real roots. Let's try to figure this out using a picture. These are the three possibilities of solutions for a quadratic equation. If there are two solutions, the graph will look like the top one. If there is only one solution, graph will exactly touch the x-axis. If there are no real solutions, the graph will be always x-axis above the x-axis because a solution is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if there are no solutions, no real solutions, the graph will never cross the x-axis. In our expression, since the graph should be always positive, it should be either one solution situation or no real solution situation. In order to satisfy that, the discriminant of that quadratic equation should always be less than or equal to zero. That is the only case where you end up with either one solution or no solutions at all. By substituting the values of b, a and c, where a is ex square, b is 2 times exy, 
and C is E by square, we end up with the discriminant to be the expression shows in the equation. Therefore, by substituting A, B and C in the inequality, we end up with the expected of XY whole thing square is less than or equal to expected value of x square times expected value of y square, which is exactly the cauchy schwarz inequality. Here's another application. If we take the absolute value of covariance of x and y, which is always less than or equal to the product of the standard deviations of x and y. In order to prove this, you can apply the Cauchy-Zwas inequality by replacing x with x minus ex and y with y minus ey. I leave it as an exercise for you to try.